So we'll move straight on to the next talk by Peter Latzke, or Pit Latzke, as he's known to friends, or even to enemies, I suppose. Um, he's, gonna, he's got a quite interesting title for his talk, actually. It's, it's combining two things, um, namely the cleaning industry and sexiness, which are two things that we don't normally combine with each other. And you know, some people here in the audience might now think, oh, I feel, you know, I'm pretty sexy, so I should probably not pay attention. Um, that might actually be true, because the real interesting stuff in this talk is for those of you who don't feel so sexy. Because Pid actually promised me that he's got some real clever advice. If you're actually not all that sexy at all, but you can still convince others that you are. Very true, thank you very much. Um, yeah, sexiness is what I want to talk about. Why did, why did I pick sexiness in the title? First of all, I think it was a nice, nice catchphrase. Second thing though, sexiness is a thing everybody of you can relate to. It's a certain value you feel attracted to. And uh, well, if you see something sexy, you kind of want to, you want to go for it, keep it there. An example in the industry might be Apple. Um, Apple, the iPhone is a telephone which is, from an economist's point of view, not really sellable. There are better phones, there are cheaper phones, there are cheaper and better phones, and nonetheless, some of you decided for an iPhone. The marketers know this and call this plain sexiness. Well, I promised to talk about the cleaning industry. There is, in fact, nothing uh, sexy in the cleaning industry. The cleaning industry is related to um, dodgy working conditions, low wage, it is immigrant work, it is highly gendered, low education, hmm. not really sexy. Additionally, um, most of the work is invisible. You only see low wage work if there's something went completely wrong. Your notebook was stolen, the toilet smells, you don't get anything to eat. That's together, the bad image with the, bad invisib uh, with the invisibility leads to a very low willingness by the clients to actually pay for these services. Hmm. The industry is facing a fierce price competition and with a margin of 3%, nobody can actually work profitable. So some companies are striving for a different approach. We now do quality cleaning. What is quality, you think now? Well, put it left around, put it right around. Well, that's not the way it goes. Quality is usually related to a, um, to a feature of a product, be it merino wool in your pullover, be it five megapixels or 10. It is something, a technical feature of your thing. But I personally can't differ if a picture is taken by five, with five or 10 million megapixels. I just find it a picture. So, Sometimes, with a technical, technological path, I feel rather be taken for a fool than facing an invention. Apple, again, a good example, knows this. You look at your iPhone now again, and it says, designed in California. It is designed. That is part of the production process, and it, is nothing, it has nothing to do with the product itself. So, there is a value created call it sexiness, that is attached to the product. Okay, that is something you have faced before. You go into the supermarket and look at something saying organic farming, saying um, is coming from, from a special regional place, especially the whole thing of doing good becomes a, a process which is a, a value which is attached to the process of um, production. And now we come to the, uh, to the cleaning, I think. <laughs> um, my Foca company is a 50,000 people cleaning company. Um, and they are having this problem of not being visible and not having a quality. But they want to be the best and they jump off on this train of doing good. And how would you do this now? I mean. Every cleaner in the industry is actually pretending to be good. And the client himself, Volkswagen for example, he would never buy a slave driver, of course, if the slave driver says we are a slave driver. So the cleaner says we are doing good. The normal in the industry would be the cleaner himself has constantly to show we are good. This happens, first of all, with selling it. I was in a presentation 
And the salesman started his whole presentation with saying, the DNA of our company is actually good. Then there came a story with um, the founder. He was a lucky man and he was donated a typewriter. With this very typewriter, he sent an offer to a company. The company said, yes, we want you to clean our, um, our facilities. And out of this job, uh, he grew a 1 billion euro company and was quite successful. And now he wants to give back something to society. And the client says, yeah, yeah, that is uh, yeah, reasonable. Okay, but before the client can actually think on, the salesman goes, and now we do have the we are better facts. The we are better facts would be something like, we pay sickness leave, we pay uh, holidays, we've got ergonomic tools, we've got organic chemicals. So um, we take care of our workers and the best thing is we do have this special education program. And the client goes, wow, education, education to my ear, ear sounds like a value in itself. It sounds like nobody's left behind, so they will probably learn something, they also will be a bit more efficient, that saves my money, and they are motivated. Happy, happy, joy, joy, cleaners going through my facilities. Fair enough. So the, the, the client is ready to go for, uh, for the offer. And now the final move would be of the, um, of the salesman. We would like to start our cleaning thing, not when everybody has left your facility, dear client, but a little bit earlier, say 4.30. And the client says, yeah, okay, I don't mind. Nobody's going to hoof my, be hooving in my, in my office. Everything's cool. And this is exactly now what happens. Now you've got the client's workers at the place, and the, uh, the cleaners would... Uh, you've got the client's workers at the place, the cleaners come in, and the clients see uh, the gathering of the workers, nice uniforms, um, all these orderly prepared cleaning carts, and actually he sees lessons taking place and thinks that is fairly professional. They do actually really take care of their workers. Additionally, now there is an interaction going on. The, the, the clients, um, employees can now talk to the janitors and be like, dear mister, dear missus, would you please take care of my flowers? And of course the janitor says, oh, of course my friend, I would do whatever you want. So um, we've got a High customer, uh, uh, higher customer relationship, better customer relationship, and better customer satisfaction. And the, cu the customer himself thinks, thinks, yeah, we are doing good. And now, everything could be fine. The, with this, we are doing good. My focal company is actually quite successful. They are doing better than the market, have a fair market share, and um, now the story could end if there wasn't a downside. The downside would be these educational momentums, these lessons don't come for nothing. The janitors do actually learn something and they do basically learn this is your equipment, this is your area, this is your, um, this is your client, this is the stuff you have to take care of. You are responsible for this. So in fact the whole education system which is sold so well is nothing but a downshift of responsibility from the head of the company to the actual cleaner. With the, with the shift of responsibility, there also goes hand in hand a higher, um, higher amount of control. And this higher amount of control puts additional pressure on the cleaner, him being more motivated, of course, first thing. Second thing, if there happens something bad, the, the mistake can be traced exactly to that very, very person. That is quite a strong tool if you want to get rid of somebody, right? So we've got a, um, so the, the cleaner is very, very much motivated, which was the actual goal. Second thing, now with, the, um, with a better relation to the, to the client's workers, um, they are vulnerable in doing, of doing favors. Their time slots are measured by quarters of an hour. If now the client says something like, would you please take care of my flowers, my dear friend? The, the janitor, of course, says, oh, of course, Peter. I, who would reject a favor for a friend? So again, we've got a momentum of higher self-exploitation. And that is what, the, what the, client, uh, the, the cleaning company was actually going for. 
the they sell being good as a value. That is, um, they sell being good as the as a value, but in fact, the value they are going for is more eff 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 effectiveness. Um, but it is so much sexier to sell being good than to be a slave driver. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Pete. Um, that was a pleasantly cynical undertone to your presentation. But is it really true that all this talk and these efforts that you talk about, uh, trying to make things a bit better, trying to make things a little bit more human in a way, um, is it all just make-believe and a whole lot of BS, or is there actually potential for some improvement for the people working there? Well, uh, if I was to judge it, the way I put it was cynical, that's true. It's a better talk if I am cynical than to be like, no, everything's cool. Um, I actually think it's an effort in the right direction, but it is, um, first of all, it is not good. It is not as good as it is sold. There are, well, the, the core motivation of the, of the uh, company is not to do good, it is to earn money. And this is something that I find necessary to talk about and to keep an eye. Thank you very much, Pit. Um, you um, unpacked the concept sexiness for pretty, uh, pretty effectively, I thought. Sort of, you know, it looks good, but if you actually look rationally and sort of make choices, it looks very different. 